If you found a physical item, the safety of which determined the safety of your relationships, what would you do to try to protect it? Hello everybody, I'm Lavis and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-5164. Love Crystals, protect your love life with the power of the Foundation. Let's begin. Item number SCP-5164, Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures as SCP-5164-A instances cannot be moved without causing irreparable damage, multiple stationary task forces, currently Kappa-32, Mu-11, Phi-09, Sigma-18, and Gamma-16, have been deployed throughout Wake Island in order to ensure none of the SCP-5164-A instances are destroyed or damaged. Description SCP-5164 is an anomalous phenomenon currently affecting Wake Island, which provokes the generation of anomalous crystals, here and after referred to as SCP-5164-A, throughout the entire island. This phenomenon appears to only affect Wake Island as surrounding territories have not been affected by SCP-5164. SCP-5164-A refers to an undetermined number of solid small crystal gems, estimated to be around 3,865,000,000, that vary in shape and color, although all of these instances present seemingly random color changes that decrease with the passage of time, being always transparent when newly created. SCP-5164-A instances have direct effects on human relationships, more specifically on engagement relationships between subjects that are in love with each other when physically modified, as shown in the following test log. Test 1. Researcher in charge, Dr. Peter Roxby. Subjects involved, D-2718 and D-2273. Date, August 23rd, 1935. Procedure. D-2718 and D-2273 were exposed to multiple stimuli in order to generate an emotional link between each other. Purpose: Create an SCP-5164-A instance that would be used in future tests. Result: A few moments after the settlement of the relationship, a new SCP-5164-A instance was created, which turned purple after three hours. It was later confirmed that D-2718's favorite color is red and D-2273's favorite color is blue. Test number 5. Researcher involved, Dr. Peter Roxby. Subjects involved, D-2718 and D-2273. Date, August 25th, 1935. Procedure. The SCP-5164-A instance was cut slightly 16 times using a small blade. Purpose. Check what kind of damage to SCP-5164-A instances was necessary to negatively affect the relationship. Result: Both subjects expressed that their mate talked to them in an unusually cutting or biting way, but eventually got used to it. Some small negative changes, such as mistrust, were observed during the first two days, but they quickly ceased after two more days. Test number 8. Researcher in charge, Dr. Peter Roxby. Subjects involved, D-2718 and D-2273. Date, August 29th, 1935. Procedure. The SCP-5164-A instance was fragmented using a hammer and a chisel. Purpose. Estimate the resistance of SCP-5164-A to physical damage. Result. The crystal easily fragmented, measuring approximately 6 points on the Mohs scale. When the instance was fragmented, however, it quickly lost its color and luster, turning transparent again in a few seconds, and no additional color changes were observed after 16 days. At the time the SCP-5164-A instance was shattered, it was reported that D-2718 and D-2273 began to argue in an aggressive tone. The argument continued to escalate until the two began to beat one another before being restrained by Site-27 security personnel. Posterior questioning revealed that both subjects broke up. Any further attempts to reunite the subjects failed. Test number 9. Researcher in charge, Dr. Peter Roxby. Subject involved, D-2718 and D-2273. Date, August 30th, 1935. Procedure. The two fragmented SCP-5164-A instances halves were welded again into their original position. Purpose? 
to determine whether or not the repairment of an instance would be able to fix previously broken relationships. Result, shortly after this, D2718 and D2273 expressed to show interest in each other again by sudden and unknown reasons. Although, quote, things would not be exactly like the first time. The progress of the relationship was closely followed for two weeks, and it was determined that both subjects were successfully in love again. Test number 10. Researcher in charge, Dr. Peter Roxby. Subjects involved, D2718, D2273, researcher Valeria Kor, and Dr. Stephen Gonsalves. Date, September 17, 1935. Procedure, the SCP-5164-A instance was split again into two pieces, and another instance, chosen randomly, was also split. Then, each upper half was well to the opposite lower half. Purpose? Find out if the interaction between two SCP-5164-A instances would significantly affect the relationship. Result? The second 5164-A instance was found to correspond to the one generated by researcher Valeria Kor and Dr. Steven Gonsalves' relationship. Both subjects were gathered with the participants' D-Class personnel. When the 5164-A instances were fragmented, all subjects lost interest in their respective couples and broke up. Shortly after that, researcher Kor began to interact with D-2273 several times, apparently wanting to befriend her suggesting a potential bond influenced by the SCP-5164-A hybrid instance. However, Dr. Gonsalves and D-2718 didn't show any interest in each other. The reason for this is still unknown. Test 11. Researcher in charge, Dr. Peter Roxby. Subject involved, D-2718, D-2273, researcher Valeria Kor, and Dr. Stephen Gonsalves. Date, September 17, 1935. Procedure, both of the hybrid 5164A instances were split again, and each upper half was welled back to its respective lower half. Purpose, to determine the extent to which an instance of SCP-5164A can be repaired without causing notable damage to the relationship. Result, when the 5164A instance corresponding to researcher Core and Dr. Gonsalves was welled again, the relationship did not recover and eventually ended. Further attempts to make the subjects fall in love again failed. The instance corresponding to D-2718 and D-2273, on the other hand, regained its purple color in about two hours after its repairment, and both individuals were later confirmed to be dating again. Addendum A, Important Incidents. The following are the logs of important incidents that caused massive destruction of SCP-5164-A instances. Event, an unnamed typhoon provoked by an unregistered anomaly passed near Wake Island. Date, October 19, 1940. Amount of SCP-5164-A instances damaged, approximately 20% of the instances, 772.9 million. Additional information. Most Foundation personnel present on the island died due to a lack of shelters equipped to withstand climate conditions of this nature. A disinformation campaign was undertaken in order to cover the damaged relationships in the United States, Mexico, and Canada as an effect of the collective hysteria caused by the typhoon passing by. The statistics of couple problems from other parts of the world were altered by the Foundation to cover the incident. The cost of these operations was estimated at just over 70 million US dollars. After this incident, the Foundation initiated construction of a site to operate under the jurisdiction of Site-19 in the Wake Islands. The new site was built to withstand typhoons and cyclones and also served as a shelter for the stationary task forces housed on the island. The site was designated Site-27 and was covert under the facade of a military base in the area. Event. 36 Japanese bombers flew over Wake Island and raided it, destroying most of Site-27. It was later confirmed that many of the troops involved in the attack used anomalous technology developed with the help of the IJAMEA. Date, December 8, 1941. Amount of 5164A instances damaged, approximately 16% of the instances, 618.4 million. Additional information, 
Site-19 was informed about the attack, and multiple mobile, aerial, and naval task forces were deployed in order to help Site-27 personnel. The conflict ended 15 days later, on December 23rd, and the cost of damages caused to Site-27 were estimated at 327.6 million US dollars. As most of the affected relationships could be attributed to the general social tensions caused by World War II or belong to individuals that died in combat, the Foundation did not need to run any disinformation campaign. The IJAMEA was pointed out as being responsible for this, along with the Japanese government. After multiple deliberations, the O5 Council decided to undertake multiple efforts to destabilize the IJAMEA and thus be able to establish a Japanese Council in the territory, successfully achieving it in the course of four years. Event Category 4 Typhoon Olive hit the Wake Island, causing major damage in most of the structures settled in there, including part of Site-27 and flooded the island. Date, September 16, 1952. Amount of 5164A instances damaged, approximately 32% of the instances, 1,236.8 million. Additional Information the containment chamber housing the SCP-5164A instances managed to withstand Olive's first hit and did not receive important damage until about two hours before the typhoon began to move away from Wake Island, a moment in which the ceiling of the chamber cracked and eventually collapsed. Most of the debris was warded off by Olive, but some parts of it still damaged an important number of SCP-5164A instances. The Foundation undertook multiple disinformation campaigns in many countries and modified the statistics about couple problems. However, those campaigns were not as successful as the ones undertaken in 1940. The O5 Council approved the use and development of subtle behavioral experimental memetic agents that were deployed on recorded media. The cost of repairing Site-27 and the expenses required to maintain the veil were estimated at 160 million US dollars and some projects' budgets were cut or deviated in order to cover the costs. Event: Category 5 Hurricane Ioke hit the Wake Island. Date: August 28, 2006. Amount of 5164A instances damaged, approximately 8% of the instances, 309 million. Additional information. Site-27 personnel were able to enact the Herbert Reflective Field, or HRF, in time before the hurricane hit the island. However, while Ioke was moving away from the island, the HRF began to exhibit slight failures due to the strength of the typhoon and the time it was being active. At the time, the HRF failures were dismissed and it stayed on for one more hour before it began to show severe failures. The emergency use of additional HRF units was authorized, which were quickly transported to the area and two were activated to replace the damaged one. During the unit switch, some rubble entered the containment area, damaging a medium number of SCP-5164-A instances. Although a good part of Site-27 was not severely affected by the hurricane, the containment area of the 5164-A instances was almost completely knocked down by the storm surge that followed due to the remnants of Iok. The cost of repairing Site-27 and the expenses required to maintain the veil were estimated at 88 million US dollars. Addendum B, Unusual Relationship. After the incidents provoked by Hurricane Ioke, Site-27 personnel reported a broken SCP-5164-A instance still showing color and a slight glow. After much research, it was found that this crystal belonged to Anne Delarev and Jake Stevenson, civilians residing in Alaska. It was later confirmed that both individuals were still engaged despite the fragmentation of their 5164A instance. Several investigations were made regarding the reason for this, however, they did not give conclusive results, so multiple hypotheses have been made in this regard, such as possible anomalous influences due to an unknown event in which one or both individuals were involved possible anomalous qualities present in one or both subjects, which have not been confirmed yet, possible altered levels of humes of one or both individuals, the strength of the relationship, the old age of the 5164A instance since the relationship was settled on in 1957. Thanks for listening. If you liked that video, maybe you'll like this one too. Have a nice day.